We are back in my pantry. This is January of 2024. We had a very large building project that we were doing in our garden. Canning wise, I really didn't put up a lot besides meat. I did can a bunch of meat. Really the only thing that I can from our garden was potatoes. I really like having canned potatoes on hand. Just dump these into stews or make mashed potatoes at the last minute. And my boys like these too. And a lot of times if we're really busy, I'll just come out here, grab a jar of meat off the, off the shelf, grab some vegetables and grab a thing of potatoes. And that's like a meal in like 10 minutes, just as long as it takes me to heat it up. I used to try to keep all my potatoes whole, you know, straight out of the ground. I would lay them out, let them dry, and then bring them in here and try to store. And that does really great when you're here to check them because you still have to check them weekly because some do rot and you need to take those out. And our schedule, we leave in either end of December or January to go to Florida and we don't come back, you know, for four to five months. So that was like a whole four to five months where things were not getting checked. And I was just coming home to just the buckets of rotted potatoes. And so I just decided the best way to do it was canned potatoes. And so every year now for the past three years, I think I've just been canning all my potatoes. We had a very, very good apple crop this year. And so I ended up canning a ton of um, applesauce. This applesauce is really dark. It is a um, cinnamon applesauce. We like it cooked down almost to apple butter and so that's what that is. And then I do also, I can apple butter and apple juice and then I did some apple jelly. That is the only jelly I've done this year because all of up there and down at the bottom down here is jellies. We have so, so much jelly. I didn't even do any strawberry jam this year because the chipmunks took over my garden this year and ate every single strawberry I had, every grape we had. And so we did not get any fruit um, from our garden to make jam with. But other than that, that is the only things I canned vegetable wise. Now we did have a really good year for meat and I canned a bunch of meat. We harvested our last four pigs this year. We put two pigs in the freezer and then I canned two pigs. And so we have a bunch of canned pork here. Um, we smoked this on our smoker before I canned it and it is so good. Just like pulled pork straight out of the jar. And then I did a lot of broths this year. Anytime we had any bones, I made broth. And so we have actually from that smoked meat, we have some smoked pork broth, which is really good when you're making, you know, pork noodle soup. You can put that broth in there and it's really good. When we killed our turkeys this year, I made turkey broth. We have elk broth. We have bone broth. And I use a lot of that stuff. I use all that stuff in place of water when I'm cooking stuff. So if I'm cooking rice or soup, instead of adding water in there, I just add bone broth. It helps the flavor so much, but it also gives you so much of a nutrient value, you know, instead of just using water in your dishes. And then we also did a bunch of lard from our um, fat from our pigs. I did make a video on that. And so I will make sure I put a link for that up there. And so Clay and I this year chose to give up all seed oils because they're very inflammatory. And so the only we threw everything out. So the only oils that we have um, is the lard that we use, you know, for frying. And then we have olive oils for making salad. And then we have avocado oil. Those are the only three oils in our house. So we've been using a lot of lard. Oh, and one other thing I did get from my garden this year is um, we had a bunch of radishes. Radishes did really good. And so I did a bunch of pickled radishes. These are really good. You can see these straight out the jar they're not sweet um i don't like any type of a sweet pickle but um these are dill and uh, they're good i did a bunch of canned cranberry juice and we don't really drink juice in our house um but i do like cranberry juice and it's kind of nice just to add a splash you know into some seltzer water or if you're making a mixed drink you can add a splash of that um, and so i like cranberry juice and we have apple juice. Those are the two only two juices I did. And then this is made with honey and so is the apple juice. It's made with honey as well. And another thing that I did this year is cranberry chutney um, just because cranberries were so cheap right after Thanksgiving or right around Thanksgiving. So I bought a bunch of them and I made cranberry chutney. This is really, really good. I just used my plum chutney recipe and I made a video on this. I'll make sure I link that up there for you as well. Um, but this is really good. It's kind of like a barbecue sauce. I use it when I cook pork. Another thing I did do this year um, from the garden is I got a lot of spices and so I ended up making all my flavored salts. 
I find that I make flavored salts. We actually use the the herbs, but if uh, you know if we're just using a dried herb, we don't use it very much. And so I like to make salts. And so I made videos on that. I'll make sure I link that up there so you can get the video to that as well. But we did jalapeno salt and cilantro salt and rosemary sage and I like a citrusy salt. Um, we did celery salt and we use all of those really on a weekly basis, if not daily. Finn loves the rosemary sage salt. He uses it on his eggs when he cooks his eggs every morning or whatever else he can find to put on it. That's what he uses. Still have a ton of our cinnamon pears and our peaches that we, we, pro, that we got a couple years ago from a farm. But we have pickles and our banana peppers and all kinds of jellies and syrups and flavored oils. This whole bottom part down here but underneath me here is either extra fruit or um, broth. But one thing you can see in here is I am completely out of room and I really didn't even put anything from our garden wise up this year. It was just, you know, canned meats or condiments, you know, some just fun things. And so coming into this year, gardening season, I have no room to put anything and I really need to stock up on all of our tomato products and green beans. We eat those a lot in canned green beans are really great if you open them up put a little bit of your lard in there and just cook them up like that it's really good add some bacon perfect but um so i need more space because we are full here this whole side of here that you can't see i will turn you around so you can see it but this is all of my store-bought stuff um some things that we're just not ever going to grow you know i have olives over here and just different things that I, you know, I'm just not going to take the time to grow um, or it's just not feasible for me to grow those things. It's easier for me to buy those. That side is full. This side is full. And so we're kind of in the area now that I have absolutely no room for anything else. Actually, I don't have room now. Like everything is just so cluttered and stacked up in here just to make it all fit. So with that being said, we are one of our projects this year for the farm is going to be building another building for this kind of stuff and I'm going to take you around and show you that today and show you like what else we have going on around the homestead in this video. Okay so I'm standing here in our future processing room smokehouse slash food storage room. Um, still not finished. Um, hopefully it's going to be finished this year. This whole front area here is going to be our processing room. Um, we're going to have counters and sinks, and then I'll be able to, um, we'll have our camp chef out here. I'll be able to, you know, wash vegetables straight from the garden to here, you know, to canning, and then to putting them on the shelf. Or if we're doing meat, we can hang meat in here and work on that as well. And then we're going to go, eventually it's going to go through here. This area here is going to be um, a canning storage for canned foods, canned meats, things like that. And then this area over here to my left, your right on the TV is going to be our smokehouse, which we're going to be able to hang large chunks of meat, smoke it in there, make jerky, things like that. This room is going to be super, super great for the homestead and I cannot wait till we have it so I do not have to take everything into my kitchen and then haul it from place to place. But let's go take a look at our freezers. That was our main source of like what we did this year. And yes, I did say freezers. I finally give in and bought a new freezer this year. So let's head on over there and take a look. So for our meat this year, we ended up, we butchered our last four pigs, but we ended up on top of that, we got three deer, um, an elk, and then a few turkeys and various, you know, ducks and pheasant, um, things like that. But we ended up canning two of the pigs, and so, but, so we have two full, or we did have two full pigs in here. Um, we've ate a pretty good bit of that. But in here we have, you know, our pigs. We have roast from deer and from our elk, our stew meat. Um, we have a bunch of pork bones and pork fat still from our pigs that we can make into sausage later on with some deer meat. And then we also have just some store-bought things that we like to have, um, frozen fruit, you know, frozen okra, um, just some vegetables that we use. We have extra butter in this freezer. We have pork chops in here, lots of pork chops. 
But uh, yeah, so in the deep freeze here, we keep all of our bigger chunks of meat. And then in the upright freezer is all the smaller stuff, you know, the burger, stew meat, bacon, sausages, things like that. And then another thing we also have in here is um, we supplement cedar with fresh meat quite often. And so any type of, um, anytime we've killed our pigs or deer, anything we take all of like, the lungs and the kidneys and the liver. I mean, I eat liver too, but I'm like the only one out of us that eat it. And so some of it goes to be chopped up to um, cedar. So this whole bag here is full of cedar stuff. He has, we have them labeled cedar chicken dinner, deer dinners, liver dinners. So um, yeah, he gets meats, fresh meat for his um, dinner meals um, a couple times a week. <laughs> so all this is our apple apple cider, apple juice, whichever you would like to call it. And then we have some our leftovers, some sherbet in here. Um, and then we have the shelf here is all of our back straps, our tenderloins from our elk and our deer. And then down here we have our bacon that we smoked our, and all of our sausages that we made. So lots of sausage and bacon still and we have a bunch more fat to make more sausage and then down here this is all burger some of it is deer burger some of it is elk burger um, that's really what we use a lot of burger and so that whole shelf is burger and then down on the bottom here we have um, just some stew meat that's easy to get to stew um, pork stew and then we have pork loins pork chops um, and then and then we have a few few pieces of turkey that we have left. All right, so the new addition to the farm is right here. I have been wanting a high tunnel for several years and I did film this. I was going to be doing a whole video, you know, on the build and what my plans are for this. So our high tunnel back here is a 30 by 80 foot. And so that gives us 2,400 square foot of growing space in the sucker. And I am so, so excited to get started growing in it. But like I said, I will be doing a different video on this build, you know, and my, my hopes and my dreams for this area and what I, you know, what I want for it to become. Um, it is definitely going to be a learning curve for me because I've never grown in anything like this before. So I'm really excited, you know, to, to jump in and dig in on that. But that's going to be another video for later on in the spring when I start doing it. But now that we've been talking about this, let me go ahead and take you in and show you just a little peek of what the inside looks like. All right, let me talk a little bit about this. My Eventually my goals for this is for this to be nothing but raised beds with walkways through long raised beds. For this first year one, we don't have the time, to, you know, because we get a four, we don't have the time to get here and get all the raised beds made. For this first year, we're just gonna be planting straight into the ground. And so we're putting this huge tarp in here just to keep the weeds from growing this year. I think having this will make it so I can not be in such a rush to get back here to start seeds and then, you know, get my seeds and stuff into the ground and then have a longer growing period. It was really warm in here to the end of November, so I'm pretty sure I can continue growing things in here until beginning of November, mid-November, I'm hoping. Okay, so let's talk about what 2024 has in stores for not only myself, but the Hayes family. Going into the end of 2023, I had huge plans to do this massive garden, garden this year. I was going to be here, get all my seeds started, because that's really something I haven't had the opportunity to do in several years, because the way we choose to live our life, we leave at the end of December, right after Christmas or January, and we go and spend the winter months in Florida, which is fabulous. You know, we we get the best of both worlds. We have the mountains and the wonderful summer up here, but we don't like the winters. And so we head to Florida, we get beautiful weather. You know, we have the beaches and the water that we love. And then we're also around family and it's really wonderful to be around family for that many months of the year. My kids are making wonderful, wonderful relationships with, you know, not only their cousins, but their grandparents. And I can remember as a child having a wonderful relationship with my grandfather. And so I really like the fact that we go down there so they can get that experience, you know, in that connection with their grandparents. That being said, it makes things that I like to do very, very hard. I love to get my hands dirty. I love to start 
my seed. Us going down to Florida makes it so one, we either have to rush back to get back here in March so I can start seeds or when we get back and then I have to go and buy plants, which is not ideal because I like specific varieties of different things and most of the time I can't find those and so I just have to go and just, you know, buy tomatoes or buy peppers and I don't get to get that exact variety that I like to have. So coming into the end of last year, my plan was to get back here, get my seeds started because I was so excited to plant all my stuff in this greenhouse and get growing with it. But as life is life, plans changed and that's not gonna happen this year. So one thing I like to do is when we're coming into a new year, I we we kind of sit down and figure out, you know, what trips that we want to go on, what things we want to, what things we really want to do, what things we kind of we kind of want to do, you know, what we could fit in there and then, you know, projects that we have around here that we want to do or need to be done. And hunting trips are a huge huge part of that. You know, we everything kind of revolves around hunting season and so come this year we had to kind of sit down and say you know what does this year have in store for us so one it's january we're end of it it's the end of january we have still not gone to florida yet and that is because clay got called to be on jury duty call i mean he doesn't have to do jury duty he's just had to be here for the whole month of january just in case he got you know called in for jury duty so um this is our first January in Idaho in five years, four or five years maybe now. Um, so we're still here. We're getting ready to leave next week to go to Florida. When we're in Florida, we are really busy. You know, we really take that opportunity down there to do the things that we can't do up here. We spend a lot of time out on the water fishing in our boat. You know, we spend a lot of times at the beach. Um, we spend a lot of time, well, I should say Clay. Clay and them spend a lot of time looking for pigs. Then we're going back to St. Croix this year, so that will be, um, that's gotten to be a trip that we all look forward to going down there and snorkeling. And then I, back in October, I did my, um, and I have a whole video series on it, um, or three videos that I did on my very first solo backpacking trip. I went out there to conquer a fear that I've had for a very long time and I talk about it in the videos, you know, I document this whole thing. So if you wanna go check those out, I will put a link here. I'm not gonna get into it, but um, that was such an eye-opening experience for me. Um, I was terrified to be out there by myself, you know, camping and hiking by myself. By the end of the trip, I found out it was not as scary as I thought it was gonna be. And I started already looking forward to um, the next trip. And so one of the things I would like to do while we're in Florida is do some soil hiking. Our plan for Florida kind of and went around a big surprise trip we had planned for my oldest son. My son has wanted to go to this RC airplane show um, across the country from us for years and years. He's super big into engineering and he gets foam board and makes his own planes and you know wires them up, puts motors in them. He's really big into that. And so he's wanted to go to this thing for probably four years now. And so for Christmas this year, we um, gave him the trip to go over to this RC airplane show. You know, he gets to, to be involved in it and to the building of the airplanes. He gets to build his own airplane and fly it. And so our trip to Florida really revolved around this trip for him. So we're actually gonna be staying in Florida longer this year so we can hit the spot kind of on the way back, like a big detour and then on the way back to Idaho. And so we will be in Florida all the way until the middle of June, which means that I do not get to start my seeds and plant into this wonderful thing this year, but it is a sacrifice I'm willing to make for this thing that he has wanted for so long. So when we will be going to that, coming back here, and then I have a very big trip of my own planned um, for a month, the whole month of July. So as soon as we get back here, a couple days later, I will be flying back to Florida to meet up with my sister-in-law and we're gonna go on a month long trip together. I'm not ready to say what that trip is. So I will be gone the whole month of July. 
So I'm hoping that week I'm here, I can get some stuff planted or I can get Clay and the boys to plant stuff while I'm gone on my trip for the month. And then when I come back and I'll be back the 1st of August and then Clay leaves for September to go on a whole different trip. We will not be going to elk camp this year because he has an adventure of his own lined up. And so he will be gone the month of September. And then hopefully we'll come back to our normal October, November and December hunting and then we'll be back to Florida again. So where does that leave this beautiful high tunnel? Honestly, I don't know. Um, when we are gone to Florida, we have someone stay at our place here. And so I have, I'm hoping I'm going to sit down and talk with our friend Teague and see <coughs> if he's willing to start, you know, the seeds for me, or am I going to buy plants when I get here and try to get things into the ground? I might not do a summer garden again and just focus on a fall garden. And I really do want to document a full year of growing in this high tunnel. I think like that would be a really fun video just to see one full year of growing things in here and what I can get out of here. But I do want to take you around the farm and show you some projects that we are going to be doing on the farm. We're going to be building a gym, just a home personal gym on our property. Clay and I like to work out and all of our stuff is on our front porch it's just a lot of stuff to have right there on the porch it takes up half the porch so i'm standing right outside the um our smokehouse processing room this area back here we're going to be using the space to turn into our home gym which i am so so excited about and this is kind of a funny story because i have been telling clay for years that i wanted to turn a bay of our barn over here into a gym and he's like no we don't we don't need it we don't need it we never use it and then all of a sudden this year it was his idea and it's a fabulous idea because he because he thought of it so but i get my gym either way so it doesn't matter and then of course we're going to be continually continuing working on a smokehouse that we have started koi my oldest son has actually been doing the um, framing on the smokehouse he's doing a really great job finn is going to continue being finn making his own videos about little boy things and what little boys do and then Koi's going to be 15. He's going to be driving this year, but um, Finn's going to be, you know, continuing doing what Finn does. And Koi's going to continue doing what Koi does. And we're going to continue on with our homeschooling and just living life to the fullest and enjoying each other's company. I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it was just kind of like all this stuff just smushed in here together. But this is my last week in Idaho and I wasn't going to have time to come back and do these separate videos. So I thought, why not just combine them all into one? In the process of doing this video, I hit some questions that people have been asking. There's actually one more place that I want to show you. One question I actually get a lot on is, do we do an emergency food storage? And I don't really talk about this a lot, um, but yes, we do have an emergency food storage. And I was going to take you out and show you what that involve you know what that entails like what we have in our food storage just give you a sneak peek at that because that is part of our pantry tour um, that could be a whole nother video on itself but i will take you out there and give you a peek of all of our food that we have stored for an emergency all right so this room is our emergency food stash it is very dark in here and very small so i'm sorry if you can't see very well um, and there's something that scared me there's something living in the roof up here but we just have different things out here that if we needed, you know, if something happened, a natural disaster or, you know, COVID hit again and you couldn't get to the store, we have plenty of stuff out here to keep us eating for a while. Um, most of the stuff I have out here is just basic ingredients. I mean, we have wheat berries, different types of wheat berries, rye berries. Um, we have whole corn oatmeal, white rice, different types of um, pastas and you know, pinto beans, black beans, navy beans. Um, we have oats, we have corn. I order things from Azure Standards and then put them in Mylar bags, seal them up and put them into these um, food grade buckets and seal them up. Wheat berries and oats and stuff like this is good for you know up to 25 years and so this stuff just gets put out here and I don't really think about it too much. Um, we do have cans 
of um, things like Augustine Farms, like actual meals. We have cream I mean, We have things like chicken and rice and lasagna. We have soups and carrots. Um, we have fruits. Um, we have honey powders, um, you know, whole milk powders, butter powder, you know, you name it. We try to keep a little bit of it because if there was an emergency and you did have to live off your food supply, you don't really want to just be eating beans and rice forever. Like you want some variety. You want something to be able to do something with that. So to have some butter powder that you could put in something or some vegetables or meat to be able to, to add into those beans and rice would be a really great thing. And then of course, wheat berries, that's always a great, you can eat wheat berries actually like a porridge or you can grind them up and make bread corn you know you can you can cook corn you can make it into grits cornbread things like that we have you know um we have a coffee that you'll see that i actually did not like in my camping video but we do have um instant coffee stored down here um you know because if something happens i want to have my coffee but um, if we need it, then we have it. We have things like instant yeast out here, you know, to make breads. Um, but we have peanut butter powders, um, mango, blueberry, uh, spinach, bananas, carrots. Um, one thing I don't have out here is any type of a freeze dried meat. Um, we usually are pretty good on keeping a good meat supply here. So that's not something I've ever um, stocked up on and another thing that we have is like instant mashed potatoes on um, different soup mixes so sometimes when we're going hiking if we need something I can just go and grab one of these these are things that I from um, freeze dry here this one's here is a mixed um, a mixed veggie but I mean we have mashed potatoes in here and we have grits there is I've done on my own freeze dryer I've done um, powdered raw eggs so like if we're going to go out camping and we want to have eggs we just take it's like a I'm not really sure where they're at but it's like a little bitty pack here and that's got um, 12 a dozen eggs in it and so for one egg you just take a tablespoon out and mix it with some water and then you have a raw egg and so um so this is stuff is good for um you know camping as well and as far as like how much food you should have in your storage that's kind of like a personal preference that's like up to you some people have you know, a year's worth of food. Some people have two years worth of food. Some people put water in their storage. I don't have any water here just because we have a cistern. I can dip out of our cistern if we need water. Um, but having an emergency food store storage is very individual to the person that's doing it. Um, I just wanted to have basics here that I could make a meal with and I don't have a year's worth of food here but um, I kind of feel good with what we have here. I would like to add more you know fr freeze-dried fruits and some um, you know vegetables and stuff like that in because that's probably where I'm lacking in things but other than that I mean we have plenty of things that we could you know make a meal out of and then you know I'll just gradually just add to this you know as we go. I'm not the one to go to for, for advice on emergency food storage because I don't really honestly have too much of a plan I just buy things when I see it and shove it in here there's lots and lots of websites and YouTube's videos on how to start an emergency food storage what you should have in there and where to get that stuff one thing you do want to remember those when you have an emergency food storage is to protect your food every one of these buckets have a mylar bag in there with the food and so there's an oxygen absorber in the mylar it's protected it's in a bag there's no smell that can come out and then we have them in these five gallon buckets so nothing can just eat into the mylar bag so everything here is really good and protected this area here stays really nice and cool um, most you know all year round and so um, I am good with just just leaving things out here I hope you enjoyed the video of our little rundown of everything last year and what we're expecting coming into this year, all things life and gardening and on our farm. So this is going to be the last video while we're in Idaho for a while. We head down to Florida next week. Hopefully we'll get there and it will be beautiful, sunny Florida and we will pick up our fun adventures in Florida. We will see you on the next video. Bye.